What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be diving into the C7 Corvette that we got for free from Tim. As you guys know, we got this thing a while back and it's still been sitting on the trailer. We haven't had any time to get it off or even get started on working on it and it's just been chilling out here in the rain and now it's time to get this thing off this trailer which is going to be a pretty hard task just by judging how those wheels are sitting and how hard it was to roll it up on the trailer but i think i do have a solution for these wheels right here as you can see there's no suspension components such as the shock or the leaf spring that goes underneath the subframe and that is why this wheel is jammed up in here and the car is bottoming out so i think what we're going to do me and jake we're gonna move the car over there, jack the front end up and get some metal rods and basically put some metal rods in here in place of the shock and it'll get the car up in the air and this thing should roll freely off this trailer. So let's get the trailer hooked up to the truck and back it up into the shop and start fixing this front suspension. We got the car moved exactly where we want it now all we have to do is basically jack up the center of this car lift it up in the air and basically either put some two by fours or something in the place of the shocks this thing should just roll clean off the trailer check it out we got the mock-up suspension up in the air and i did also go ahead and just cut off this fender right here because it was just getting in the way of everything and basically all we did was grab a tube right here cut it put it in between the frame rail and now it's basically like a shock and it's holding the car up in the air and now it's not going to bottom out so this thing will be really easy to roll off jake's back here getting the straps all loose and it should be good to go to roll right off this trailer hopefully because man it was a pain in the butt getting it up here but I think rolling it down is going to be much easier because look how high it is in the air now. There's a distance right here. There's distance everywhere. And this thing is finally coming off the trailer. Dude, I can't wait to give this thing a nice full detail. Wash it up, polish it out, see how good that paint looks. Got to go over right here. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to just roll that off with it, yeah? Just roll it off with it. Bro, look how cool this thing looks just without the fender. Okay, let's get these ramps out. Get this thing off of here. All right, you wanna go in there and crank it up? <laughs> no, I'm scared, bro. What are we, hey, everyone, let's just run it clean in our building. So we got the car off the trailer and I gotta say the suspension fix works pretty good. The car rolls around and drives perfectly. Although the steering wheel does bind up a little bit, but I think once we get this LT1 engine out, it'll be able to roll around freely. And we kind of didn't really do any digging deeper into this car just yet. We did just take off the fender just so we can kind of get it off the trailer and check all that out. We noticed the frame is cracked right there, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I really want to get this thing cleaned up. As you guys know, this thing has been sitting for over two years and look at that dirty interior. There's dirt in there, there's grime, there's spiders. Hey, there's even a bird nest over there. So I really want to just start with that. We're going to get it all cleaned up. And then I got a friend that's going to come detail the crap out of this car and hope we make this thing look brand new again. And I did buy some of these plastic scrapers right here. And surprisingly, this stuff right here comes off pretty easy. Check that out. Usually when it's fresh off the auction, it will not come off like that. You have to sit there and use a heat gun and stuff like that. But hey, look at this. It comes right off nicely. So I think we'll be able to get this car looking back to brand new. But let's grab a vacuum cleaner and let's start with the basics and let's get this entire car vacuumed out.
and check it out we got the entire car all nice and vacuumed out and i also went ahead and removed all this white protective uh, stickering i guess it was covering the entire car and it didn't really protect much i was gonna do it on the windshield but i was just uh, it was taking way too long and i didn't really want to risk cutting myself on that glass but check out the interior it's cleaning up pretty nice you know we vacuumed everything out uh got the passenger side all vacuumed out and went ahead and removed that bird's nest that was chilling right here now let's hop in this car dude it's crazy how bad the steering is sitting like you can see it's touching my leg and then the gas pedal down there is sitting sideways because i'm guessing the engine is sitting right there but it's crazy because the person who was driving this car actually was not wearing their seatbelt. as you can see it's still back there usually when it locks up it'll be like pretty long but i guess they just didn't have it on at least this airbag right here blue and it's kind of weird though that the seatbelt on the passenger side locked up but the dash airbag didn't blow so that's definitely weird and they did have their screen down right here so maybe that screen is still good if we can get this thing to turn on but we do not have a key for this car and man look at that dash right there i guess just the impact of the engine sitting right there probably busted all this stuff right here but now we're gonna wait for my friend he runs a mobile detailing company so he'll be able to detail the entire exterior of this car really nice get all this moss and stuff out of it and i'm actually very excited to see how this car is going to look once it's all nice and cleaned up with a little bit of tire shine on the tires and i did notice the rear bumper right here i guess there was, somebody was trying to take it off you can't really get into the trunk without power and it turns out you can't really connect power to this car and we also do not have a key but i'm just glad nobody took off that rear bumper but anyways we're gonna wait on my friend he has a mobile detailing company he's gonna come in here and basically fully detail this entire car and honestly i just can't wait to see how it looks So guys, Ray from Chattanooga Mobile Detailing just showed up with his crew and he's gonna go ahead and get everything set up and we're gonna get this entire car detailed and hopefully this stuff all washes off. What do you think? This stuff's gonna all wash off pretty good, yeah? Yeah, I think we're gonna get it done. Yeah, he, make it look good. he actually detailed a couple of my other cars before and that looks awesome. So I'm just gonna let them do their thing and get this car clean.
it gets it right on, doesn't it? Check it out guys, this thing looks like a completely different car. Ray and his team did an amazing job getting it all washed out. And I didn't even notice that these rims are actually gunmetal gray or they're like a bronze color. I thought they were black because of how dirty the car was. As you guys know, this thing was sitting for two years, but Ray and his team got it all knocked out. And we did do a little bit of polishing right here. I uh, just got this little area right there because you can see there's still a little bit of residue from that stuff. I guess it's like mold sitting on the top, but man, he did an amazing job on it. And if you guys are looking to get your car detailed in the Chattanooga area, definitely hit him up. I'll drop all his socials down below. Uh, he does like a 15 mile radius, yeah, in Chattanooga? We go everywhere in Chattanooga, so let us know. Check us our work out on Instagram, Chattanooga Mobile Detailing. Sweet. Yeah, I'll drop all his information down below. If you're looking to get your car detailed, go ahead and hit him up. But man, dude, this thing looks incredible. Look at the purple. It really pops out, especially with like, it does have a little bit of a pearl in it. I can see. And man, maybe we'll have to repaint the entire car the same color. Or maybe the rear doesn't even need to be repainted. He is going to come back later. Once we get the car inside, we can do a full buff and polish on the entire back of it. Because I mean, you can't really polish and buff in the sunlight. It's like 95 degrees out here. And we did also just pressure wash the entire interior. And honestly, if this car wasn't sitting outside for two years, we would have never done that. But the fact that it was, and it was so much mold and disgustingness all over it, we just pressure washed it. And I gotta say, look at the seats. The seats actually came out pretty good compared to what they were. I mean, I think a couple more washes and these seats will be perfect. Maybe some leather conditioner just to kind of make them not so uh, tight. But really, dude, the condition of them is nice. Look at the passenger seat, it's also good. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and push this car inside and get it up on some jack stands. So Jake and I got the car inside. I gotta say this thing rolls pretty good with the new struts that we installed. Those things are solid steel. And one thing I did wanna do is actually put the jumper box on this car and kinda see if we can get anything to power on. And we have the jumper box right here. So let's go ahead and put this thing on. What do you think, Jake? You think it's gonna turn on? I think it'll crank. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Here, let's go ahead and pop that down. Got our nice Fantic jumper box. And we did notice that there's a power button right here or a power switch. Pop that on and then the ground we'll just have to go to the engine because the other ground is completely missing there we go let's see what happens inside oh dang, dang. check that out dude Twelve thousand miles only that's crazy the speedometer still works wait will it start though it's a no start wait will this go up though nope no key yo it actually works. <laughs> See if the hazards work. Hazards Yo, do work. the hazards work? Or turn the hazards on? Ah, uh, but that's, that's freaking crazy, dude. I didn't think the screen would work. That's crazy. With that kind of impact. Hazards work, screen works. Well, does it work? <laughs> one light. <laughs> Dang, the screen turns on. I, I just think it doesn't turn fully on because there's no key but the dash turns on which is crazy that's crazy dude Dang. dude i did not think the power would work i don't think the doors will open either well maybe we can open them how does the rear trunk open i think you gotta have a key with it because it's got to be unlocked yeah but i'm surprised everything inside turned on dude after sitting outside for yeah. two years you would think but i mean rain isn't really going inside the car it's kind of just dripping right here so i mean it makes sense why the dash would still work yeah, the top on and yeah and we did actually pressure wash the whole dash and it still works so it's not a flood title damage just yet but dude it cleaned up nicely seats we're gonna leather condition them up with just a little bit well, we're going to go ahead right now and jack this car up on four jack stands, get it all up in the air and do a little more investigating on how bad the damage on this car is. So 
So we got the C7 up in the air on four jack stands. And what I want to do right now is actually try to turn this motor over, which is kind of weird because this bolt right here is a little bit loose. And I don't know if that just happened on impact or something like that. But what we're going to do right now is take off this little balancer right here. Oh, I think this thing was supercharged. Yo, why would it have this super or either that's yeah, because look, this right here goes on top of this. So that's the factory one. Yeah. Maybe it was supercharged. It kind of makes sense why he punched it this freaking hard. <laughs> but let's grab a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to take off this uh, dampener right here and try to take off the actual harmonic balancer and see exactly what's going on under there. There we go. I wonder if this thing was supercharged. Though. Why would it have that on there? Okay, we got that off. That's crazy that it is loose. Unless the previous owners try to take it off. Dang, look how bent that bolt is. That's crazy. Oh my goodness, <laughs> look at that. Wait. Oh yeah, it's just a little bit bent on the top. Maybe uh, straighten it up. Dang. Dang, that's the crankshaft right there. Dang, that yeah, that oh, one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this motor's gonna turn over. Dude, look at that impact though. It just destroyed that engine. I wonder if this thing was supercharger. Because why would it have this right here on there? This usually goes on for a supercharger pulley. You Super know? damper. Yeah, it probably was supercharged because it had the extra fuel lines right here. Well, these are Continental fuel lines, so it probably had E85 on it. Might have been supercharged. Dang. They just took that supercharger and dipped. <laughs> as soon as they wrecked, they just pulled the supercharger off before the insurance could get to the car. Because, I mean, that don't look factory right there. And then you have that. Yeah. And then... Yeah, because look, here's the fuel lines. Then it does have MSD coil. Or, okay... Those are just MSD coil lines or coil wires. Yo, you know what would be cool to do with this engine? Build a table out of it. Oh, with the glass? Yeah, with the glass on top, you can yeah. just see all the pistons. Dude, that'd be, that would be cool. sick. Look at that 6.2 liter engine. GM. And guys, that's a little bit of unfortunate news on that engine. I knew the crankshaft might be bent, but I didn't realize that it was actually that bad. So I guess we'll have to see in the next episode. We'll definitely pull this engine out of the car and start investigating everything that's going on back there. And I was actually looking at some of these parts at the Chevy dealership, and they're really not that expensive. And I think maybe potentially we could get this car fixed back to OEM spec. They actually sell that entire firewall back there. And they pretty much sell, I'm pretty sure they even sell the floor for the inside of the car at the dealer and it's not too much and like this quarter panel right here is only 260 bucks brand new that's cheaper than what it is on ebay so who knows maybe in the end we'll end up rebuilding this car back to factory specs instead of building a drift car because i mean we already me and jake already rebuilt one corvette i don't think this one will be too much more of a challenge but we'll just have to see on that and 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 we will also take out the transmission out of the back in the next video. Hopefully, hopefully something is salvageable back there. But anyways, guys, but anyways, guys, if y'all enjoyed this video on this Corvette, definitely hit that like button. Also follow us on Instagram at VTune. Thanks for watching.